So we're here at the Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa. Please introduce yourself. So I'm Joseph Loftaus. I'm a sustenance farmer from Paradise, Utah. What, is, what does sustenance farmer mean? So it means I grow the food that I eat and that's the primary focus of my farming is to feed myself and my loved ones. Okay. And I sell a little bit at the farmer's market, but mostly just for gas money. Okay, fantastic. And you're here in Santa Rosa, you're a speaker. Yes. Okay, so tell me what you were speaking so, about. So, what I'm most known for is promoting promiscuous pollination. <laughs> that and sounds a little racy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well a name, another name we use for it is a land race. That is allowing genetically diverse crops to grow in an area long enough that they become adapted to the, to the farmer, to the climate, to the insects. Oh, now that was the interesting thing that I caught in your talk that I, I loved your definition of land race because that applies with animals too. So give uh -huh. me that one, that concise definition again that you use. It was so, wonderful. so the definition that I use is a land race is a genetically diverse crop that is locally adapted. So and plants or animals. Yeah, plants or animals. It's grown in one place long enough that it knows how to deal with the ecosystem, the farmer, you know, the bugs, the climate, the soil, and, and, but genetic diversity is a key to growing a land race. Because if I grow a, an heirloom tomato, it's going to be adopted to a land far away in a time far away and not to current conditions. But if I allow the genetics to shift from year to year, then they can adopt to, or adapt to my local growing conditions. So that uh, the, the example that immediately comes to mind on the animal side is the Spanish cattle that came to Florida. Uh -huh. They adapted there and became the Florida cracker. So they, the, the cattle there were pest resistant to the pests in Florida and heat tolerant, and they basically made it or not. And as the cattle moved across to Texas, it sort of morphs into the longhorn. Oh. And it's a very different uh, environment and ecosystem, correct? Yes, but they, they both came out of the same genetically diverse ancestors. That same Spanish Spanish line is where it initially came and then continues on. So how long? It's just long enough for it to adapt. It doesn't matter if it's two years or 200 years, do you think? Well, I don't care. It, if a variety is, is genetically diverse and it grows really well in my variety or in my, cli in my farm, and my community loves it. It's officially I it, adapted. I say it's a land race. Yeah. It's an adapted. Yeah, that makes you know, sense. A, but about three years, I think, is the magic time frame, because by then you've learned to be a better farmer. The plants learned what you like, and you know you're sort of all meshing. And from three years on, with like promiscuously pollinating plants, it does really well. Some of the inbreeders are harder, like garlic as a clone. And how do you, how do you uh, adapt locally for a clone? Well, you, I'm assuming you, you just have varieties that make it or don't. Well, yeah, you could plant a hundred clones and some of them would work and some wouldn't. But, yeah. you know, they're not really changing with the changing ecosystem. Yeah, just over, that's, that's the one that makes it or not. Okay, so how do you have a difficult time with things like pollination coming in on the wind from, from plants that are not locally adapted, or does it not make a difference at some point to well, you? Well, as long I don't as care, adapt? because what, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for good taste. I don't care if my squash is, you know, what color it is. It can be green or red or orange or whatever, and that doesn't affect how it tastes to me in the kitchen, and so I don't care. I don't care what leaf shapes are, you know, and so a lot of that stuff that blows in on the wind is going to be a great variety because we've had 10,000 years of domestication to get rid of all the poisons. And So in a way you are completely about it either makes it or it doesn't. If it produces an efficient and effective, it stays. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Fantastic. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. This thank has been you. great. It's been a pleasure we appreciate talking it. to you. I'm glad you came all the way out from Paradise, Utah. Paradise, is that right? Utah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's on our list of uh, Utah's on our list of places we love. So, Whoa. Yeah, it's a gorgeous state. So, thank you uh, so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming to the Heirloom it. Seed Expo.